Good evening and welcome to part two of lesson one on integration with me, Mr Sutton. Now, we talked about in the first video integration be the opposite of differentiation. So the first thing I want you to do is for each of these equations here, y equals x squared plus 3, y equals x squared plus 7, y equals x squared minus 10, uh, I just want you to very quickly find me dy dx for each of those by differentiating. Pause the video, do that quickly. Okay, hopefully what you got is 2x for the first one, 2x for the second one, and 2x for the third one as well. Okay, so if integration performs the opposite function, the inverse operation of differentiation, if we integrate 2x we should get x squared Hmm. But the issue, x squared plus 3, x squared plus 7, x squared minus 10. How do we know if we start with 2x, which was our result for all of these three, whether we get x squared plus 3, x squared plus 7, x squared minus 10? Well, the answer is that we don't know, because we don't have enough information. So the first key principle of integration is when you integrate, you get what is known as a constant of integration, uh, which we just write plus c. So if you're integrating, you always get a plus c, because this allows for the fact that if you differentiate numbers, they go to zero. So when you're integrating, you always get a plus c on the end. And with extra information, you can find out what that plus c is as a number. That's coming up in lesson two. For now, though, let's talk about what we've actually done to go from dy dx equals 2x to y equals x squared plus c. Well, if you think about how we differentiated this, we multiplied by the power and we subtracted 1 from the power. So what we're going to do to integrate is the opposite of that. We're going to add 1 to the power and we're going to divide by the new power. So 2x squared over 2 simplifies to x squared. So if we start with dy dx equals 2x, integrates to y equals x squared plus c. Uh, so general idea then is if we have dy by dx in index form, number x power, that's what we looked at in the first part of this lesson, uh, then to integrate to get y we would have ax to the power of n plus 1, adding 1 to the power, over n plus 1 and not forgetting the plus c on the end. So that is the crucial bit of that is how to do integration for expressions in this form, equations in this form. What's the point of it? Well, if you think, why do we differentiate? We differentiate because it tells us the gradient function. It allows us to work out the gradient of the tangent at a point on the curve. Well, if we don't know the equation of the curve, but we know the equation of the gradient function, given certain information, we can use integration to find the equation of the original curve. That's where all this is leading. But for now, I've just got two examples here of uh, expressions, uh, equations, gradient functions that we're going to integrate uh, to find the equation of the original curve. So we can do this a term at a time, just like we would for uh, integration uh, differentiation. So if dy dx is 4x cubed, add 1 to the power and divide by the new power we're going to get x to the power of 4. Similarly here, minus 5x squared, we're going to add 1 to the power, divide by the new power, and we're going to write that as negative 5 thirds x cubed. 2x, well we've seen this one before, 2x squared, adding 1 to the power, divided by the new power, new plus x squared, and now minus 3. Just think a bit about what would we have differentiated to get just a number. Well, it would be that number of x. So if we integrate minus 3, we get minus 3x. Uh, not forgetting, of course, the plus c. So our general solution for y, calling it general because we don't know this number, y equals x to the power 4 minus 5 over 3x cubed plus x squared minus 3x plus c. 
Next one then, different notation. If you remember when we did about differentiation, if you have f of x and you differentiate, you get f dash of x. So it could be that we're given an expression for f dash of x and we have to integrate that to find out f of x. It's important that if we're given f dash of x as our derivative, we write f of x as our function. So, however, the first thing I'm going to do with this is to write it into uh, number x power form. So, 3 root x is going to become 3x to the power of a half, and 5 over 2x squared, I'm going to write that as 5 over 2x to the power of negative 2. And now I've got it into a form where I can integrate it. I haven't integrated it yet. It's just in a form that allows me to integrate. So now f of x. If I add 1 to the power here, I'm going to get power 3 over 2. And dividing that by 3 over 2. Uh, and then with the next term, I'm going to get 5 over 2 x negative 2. Add 1, I get minus 1 and divided by minus 1. Now, 3 divided by 3 over 2 simplifies quite nicely to just 2. So 2x to the power 3 over 2. And then dividing by negative 1, that's just going to change that to negative 5 over 2, x to the power minus 1, not forgetting the plus c. Uh, now, if you're being flash here, you could think back to our first set of examples where we put them into number x power form, and you could say, oh, well, actually, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to write x to the power 3 over 2 as 2x root x because I'm feeling flash. There's no need to do that. But what you should be happy with doing is writing 5 over 2x to the power minus 1 as 5 over 2x, and then the plus c. Why do that? Well, to find out plus c, you need to know a value of x and a value for y or for f of x. In my opinion, it is much easier to substitute a number into this form than it is to substitute it into that form. So you need to be happy with either. But in terms of a correct solution to this, integrating, that will do. That's a different way of writing the same thing. OK, so in the next lesson, we'll look at what information do you need to find out plus c and how does that affect what you do.